Welcome back everyone. My name is Joel Feld and today's video is all about changing your Apple ID to a different email address. Here we go. You may need a cup of coffee or something a bit stronger for this because Apple IDs can be extremely frustrating. I'm sure we can all relate that at some point you have had questions about an Apple ID and hopefully I will clear a few of those questions up. But uh, naturally Apple IDs should be easier but they seem to be very confusing. Now we do have a couple other videos related to Apple IDs that I'll link down below for reference but this video is focusing on changing the email address of your current Apple ID to another Apple ID. You may ask the question why would I need to do that and I'll give you the perfect example. I had an older Comcast email address that I no longer use. I'm not even with Comcast anymore and the email address probably isn't even available. I can't even use it anymore. But that email address of Comcast was associated to all of my iTunes purchases and my movie purchases through Apple. And so now I want to change that Apple ID to either a Gmail account or a Yahoo or another iCloud account so that I can get rid of that Comcast account completely and never see it again. Now, one of the hurdles with that though is I already have another Apple ID that's associated with iCloud and all my personal stuff and Apple makes no way to actually merge two Apple IDs together. So as of today, I know it's on a wish list for probably thousands and thousands of users, but there is no way to merge two different Apple IDs together. We only have the ability to change the email address that is your Apple ID. So let's briefly talk about email addresses because naturally you could have an email address ending in at gmail.com, which that email is provided by Google. If you have one at yahoo.com, that's by Yahoo. If you have one at outlook.com, that's most likely by Microsoft. So all of your email addresses end in at something.com or .net, like my Comcast.net or uh, CenturyLink.net or whatever it is. I personally would never ever use an email address and I recommend don't use an email address associated to an internet provider because the moment that you may leave or stop using that internet provider, like my Comcast example, that email is now terminated and useless. So stick with an email from Google or Outlook because those are probably always gonna be around. Now Apple offers an email address also and it ends with at iCloud.com. And before iCloud was a thing, it used to be called mobile me. So that's why a lot of my examples you'll see at me.com because that was a really, really older email address from Apple before iCloud was even a thing. So if you have a Gmail account as your Apple ID and you wanna change that to a Yahoo or Outlook or something else, we can do that. I also wanna focus on changing your current Apple ID. Let's say it's Comcast and you wanna change it to an iCloud account. We can do that also, but there's some weird things with that. Let's go ahead and dive in and see how this process works. We're gonna start off by going to appleid.apple.com on the computer. And I'm gonna do primarily everything from the computer here because honestly, it's just easier to do it. Can you change an Apple ID on your phone or iPad? Yes, and I'll show you where those options are at. But honestly, do it from a computer because it's 10 times easier. So we're gonna sign in with one of my old Gmail email accounts. We're gonna do upstage studios. 43 at gmail.com, sign in. It's gonna prompt me for two-factor authentication, which is tied to the cell phone here. If you're unfamiliar with two-factor authentication, definitely watch this video below because it is a good reference for it. But I got a text message here. We're gonna sign in, 238-849. Okay, this is my Apple ID currently. It is a Gmail account. These are the email addresses that are associated with it. If I click on this, it says email and phone numbers. There's three email addresses. Now I've actually already changed this email address once because this email address used to be an iCloud provided from Apple and I actually changed it to a Gmail account. But now for fun, let's change it again. The key is you have these two categories across the top. We have the email phone numbers here and we have the Apple ID here. Now this Apple ID is tied to your main account. It's what gives you access to everything. All of these other email addresses that are here and phone numbers, 
that's what links to iMessage or FaceTime or just the ability to sign into those apps or have people contact you through those apps. It's really not your Apple ID. It's just a, an address that's associated with your Apple ID. So to change this Apple ID though, I wanna change it from gmail.com and let's change it to another gmail.com. So let's click on here and it's saying, hey, your Apple ID is used to access all Apple products and services. Enter a new email address to your Apple ID. A verification code will be sent to that address. So here, I wanna use the address of Joel Feld Training at gmail.com and I'm gonna choose change Apple ID. So now it's saying enter your password for this current Apple ID that I'm in. So I'll use my touch ID. And now it's essentially saying, okay, if you wanna change this Apple ID from upstage studios 43 at gmail.com to joelfeldtraining at gmail.com, it's going to send a verification to that email address. So let's go to gmail.com. I'm going to sign in with joelfeldtraining at gmail.com, paste in the password. Okay, so verify your email address. Here is that code that it's looking for. So I'm gonna copy this code. We're going to come back to here, paste in that code, choose continue. Here, let's have it send a new code because apparently it didn't like that code. Okay, let's not copy and paste. Let's come back here and refresh. Okay. Try this, 489687, continue. There we go. For whatever reason, maybe I waited too long. So here it says, hey, your Apple ID has been updated and successfully changed. So I'm gonna click X out of here. And now you'll notice that my Apple ID here is joelfeldtraining at gmail.com. And no longer is that Gmail account the Upstage Studios 43 at gmail.com associated with this at all. Now, if this Apple ID is tied to your music or your Apple TV or an iPhone or iTunes, all of that will actually change on the back end. You don't have to do a thing except some of those services will just re-prompt you with a message to sign back in with your password. So it'll show you your brand new email address, your Apple ID, but you just need to sign in with the password that's associated with it. So that first example was changing from a Gmail to another Gmail account. Let's go ahead and sign out of here. Now I have another Apple ID, let's do sign in. Joelfeld at yahoo.com, type in the password. It's prompting us for a verification code. I'll say text me. Now that is gonna come to my Apple ID that's actually tied into this computer, so that's why it prompts me with the text message here. So now I'm in a different Apple ID that's ending with at yahoo.com and I wanna change this to something else. This was another Apple ID that I've changed before. It used to be associated with another Upstage Studios just at iCloud or me.com. I have a lot of accounts, don't judge. I just, this is what I do and it's testing and you need a lot of accounts to test to make sure it's doing what you want it to do. So let's say that we wanna change this Yahoo email address. We could change it to another Gmail address if we wanted to, or we could create a brand new account with Outlook and change it to that. So let's go to outlook.com and we're gonna do create a free account. So let's see if learn with Joel is taken. Hey, it's not. Okay, let's do choose my own password. No, I don't wanna choose my own password. I want to fill in again, but I want to copy this strong password so that I know what it is. All right, we'll do next. Joel Feld, next. Okay, next. Please solve the puzzle so we know you're not a robot. Okay, next. This is a new one. Use the arrows to rotate the animal to the face in the direction of the hand. Oh, okay, go that way. Submit, use the arrows. Oh, well, all right, let's, oh, this is fun. I'm definitely not a robot. Here we go, submit. I'm a little monkey, submit. And there we go, submit, is that the last one? Yay, I verified I'm a human. So I'm gonna log into Outlook. Okay, so to backtrack, what we did was we just created a brand new Outlook account Learn with Joel at Outlook.com. So we're gonna move this over here. We're gonna come back to this Apple ID. So we're gonna change Joelfeld at Yahoo.com to be Learn with Joel at Outlook.com. 
We'll do change Apple ID password. So now it's saying, all right, we can do that. Let's type in the password for joelfeld at yahoo.com to verify that it's you. Type in that password, do continue. So now it's sending that code to Outlook. Notice over here on the right hand side, verify your email address. Alrighty then, I will do that. We'll do continue here. So instead of copying and pasting, let's go ahead and just type it in. It is 594206. We'll do continue. Move this back over and my Apple ID has been changed successfully. If I close out of this, it is no longer tied to joelfeld at yahoo.com. That's how easy it can be to change your Apple ID. All right, so let's do one more example of changing a non iCloud email address like a Gmail to an iCloud email address. And this is where it does get a little bit tricky because first you have to create an alias, wait 30 days, and then you can change it. So let's see how that works. So I'm gonna sign into appleid.apple.com. We'll use that same joelfeldtraining at gmail.com. So joelfeldtraining at gmail.com. This is the one that we literally just changed from an iCloud account. I'll get the verification code, 576711. As you can see here, the Apple ID is joelfeldtraining at gmail.com. Shows it right here on the side. It used to be the Upstage Studios 43 at iCloud.com, which we previously changed. Now you'll see this joelfeld underscore test apple ID at iCloud.com. That's an alias that I created and still wait. I, I think I just created it a couple weeks ago. It hasn't been 30 days, so I can't change it to that yet. Well, actually let's try. I don't think we can, but let's copy this here. Go into here, we'll paste in that new Apple ID, change Apple ID. I'm guessing it's gonna give us an error. Yeah, so you can only add the at iCloud address that is already on file in your account. So essentially what that means is I need to go to iCloud.com, open up a new tab, we're gonna to go to iCloud.com and we're gonna sign in. And we're gonna sign in with the same joelfeldtraining at gmail.com. Sign in. It will send another verification code. One, two, six, eight, three, five. I will say not now to trust the browser. All right, so this takes me into the iCloud account for the Apple ID of joelfeldtraining at gmail.com. So what I wanna do is come up to the top right, click on this little uh, boxes, choose mail, and then I'm gonna to go to the top left and click on this gear and go to the settings for mail. And this here under account, this is where I can create different aliases associated to this Apple ID. I can't just create an iCloud account because then it's already an Apple ID. So I have to create an alias first. So let's just say joel.fell.lwj, learn with joel at iCloud.com. Let's say that this is the email address. Let's do create. Okay, cool. So now this is an alias and I need to wait 30 days for this to actually be in the system. So now that it's an alias, if we come back to manage our Apple ID, if I refresh, I don't know if it shows up automatically, but we're gonna have to wait a few minutes for it to show up under the email addresses and phone numbers here, but that new alias will eventually appear here, and then we're able to go to the Apple ID and actually change it to be that iCloud account. For reference, when I changed my Comcast and did the same exact thing, I'm signing in with my Comcast email address, and I made an iCloud account that's an alias, and so I just went through the process, I changed the Comcast, that's what I didn't want anymore, and changed it to this new alias, and plugged that in, copied and pasted, changed it, chose continue, it updated successfully, so then when we go through, notice the new Apple ID shows my iCloud account, and then that Comcast is just an alias now. Whew. So that's a lot, that's a lot of changing. Um, whether you wanna do that or not, it's completely up to you. But now let's take another step and let's see how that looks like on the phone here. The same will work on an iPad. So let's say that I have the Apple ID on this phone here. So if I go into settings, notice at the top, Joel Feld, and this is my iCloud account of joel.feld.icloud.com. So if I wanted to change this email address to be a different email address for this Apple ID, I would choose sign in and security 
And then notice at the top, it has my joel.fell.icloud.com. It's associated to the telephone number of this phone. If I touch edit, it gives me the choice to delete this Apple ID or add an email and phone number. Now, if I choose add email or phone number, it's not going to change this Apple ID. It's just gonna add it on file so that I can receive iMessages as well as FaceTime calls there. It's actually not changing the Apple ID. But if we wanted to change the Apple ID, I would touch the minus sign here, choose delete, and it says, okay, if you wanna change this Apple ID, you need to add another email address. So I would say choose email address, type in my password here on my phone, and then this is where it prompts you to add the email address, you verify this, and it changes it just like it did on the computer. So I'm actually not gonna change it. The process is identical. The joel.feld at icloud.com will not be an Apple ID, it'll just be an alias, and then it's gonna be a new email address I plug in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose cancel there. But let's look at this other option for just adding another email address. So if I pull up on the computer here, let's pull up joel.feld at icloud.com. Prompts me two-factor authentication on my phone here. So 667103. Okay, so let's say that I wanna just associate another email address to this Apple ID so I could receive phone calls via FaceTime or text messages via iMessage. So on the phone here, I'm gonna choose add email or phone number and choose add email. And the same thing actually goes on the computer here. If I click on this, I can click the plus sign and add it the same exact way. It's really identical with the process. But on my phone here, let's type in learn with Joel Feld at yahoo.com. I'll touch next. So now it's saying, hey, I'm sending a verification code to that email address. Log into Yahoo here on the computer. Notice to verify your email address. So here's the number 787802. So now notice on my phone, that Yahoo address is tied and associated to this Apple ID of joel.feld at iCloud.com. So if I come back to the web page here, let's refresh, that email address should show up and there it is, learn with joelfeld at yahoo.com. Now on my phone here, if I go back to the previous screens, scroll all the way down, and choose messages and then send and receive. In a moment here, that new Yahoo email address will show up as an option where I could do iMessage from it. So send and receive text messages from it. And the same thing with FaceTime, that would also show up here. Let's wait for that to pop up. Let's just go back here, verify that we have everything there. Yeah, so the email address is there. Let's go back one more time, messages. Ah, there we go. So there's the prompt. It's saying, hey, do you want to add this learn with Joel at yahoo.com for iMessage and FaceTime? And we can say, yes, we will. So now under send and receive, we now have that email address listed under those settings. If we go to FaceTime here, we'll have the same exact thing. So now in theory, if someone FaceTimed me or messaged me at learn with Joel Feld at yahoo.com, it's gonna to come to this phone and any other Apple ID device or any other device that I'm signed in with this Apple ID with. If I don't want that anymore, I can always remove it. So if I go back to the top here, choose sign in and security, I could edit and then delete it from here, or I could do the same thing on the computer. If I select this email address and then click the minus sign here, I can say, yes, remove this email address. It will no longer be associated or used as a contact information for your account. So I will choose remove and it will take a moment and it will no longer be associated with this Apple ID. And then in a couple moments here, it will also be removed from the phone as well. So we'll just swipe back and there we go. Notice it's no longer there. And in a couple minutes, it'll probably update to the messages as well because it still says learn with Joel Feld at yahoo.com, but that will go away too. So that's really not about changing your Apple ID, it's just adding another email address to be associated with your Apple ID, so slightly different. Whew, so that, that is how to change your Apple ID. Still, it's not the best solution because you can't merge two Apple IDs, but if you have an older email address that you don't use anymore and you wanna associate it to a brand new email address, this is the process to do that. 
So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead, hit that like button and share it with a friend. If you wanna support this channel, go ahead, hit that thanks button below. And if you learn something new and wanna to continue to learn something new, hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.